In this video, I'll show you how to edit portraits using the latest version of Portrait Pro, which is Portrait Pro 21. If you've been on my channel for a while now, then you know that I've talked about different photo editing software for portraits. I previously made a video about Portrait Pro 19, which was the predecessor of Portrait Pro 21. So if you haven't upgraded yet, I'll post a link down in the video description for that video. Apparently, they skipped version 20 because that year should really be forgotten. Anyways, if you're still using the older version and wondering if upgrading to the latest is worth it, stick around to find out. And with that being said, let's get started. So let's open up an image right here. At this point, the software is trying to find faces in the image using its artificial intelligence. And then it tries to apply its default or standard preset on what it thinks looks best for your image. Looking here on the right side, you can see the adjustments made on certain areas where the power icon is highlighted blue. Then here on the left, you can see that certain parts of the image have been identified and selected. We may try to manually adjust these points to make a more accurate selection. You simply select the point and drag it to the correct position, like so. There are times that the auto selection isn't perfect, so you really have to adjust it manually yourself. Okay, let me just fast forward this step. Then here in the top right is the before and after toggle icon. We can also toggle the power icon beside each of the adjustments right here to really isolate and see what has changed. There is face sculpt, skin smoothing, skin lighting and coloring, makeup, eye, mouth and nose, hair, picture, layers, and tools. I wouldn't be going over what each section does because this is self-explanatory. I'll just go straight into editing workflow instead. Right here on top we have the spot removal tool. Use this tool to remove distracting blemishes such as pimples and dark spots. Just click on the area that you want to erase and the AI will do the rest. Let me go ahead and speed this up. So this is the before, this is after. Let's zoom all the way out. Alright, as you can see, the default preset applied really made a drastic change on the image. Let's click on the view after only so we can see it better. And then zoom in. This is the original image. This is the edited version. So what do you think? Do you like the suggested auto-retouching done by the software? Or is it too much and doesn't look natural to you? Comment down below. To save the image, just click the save icon right here. Select the image type and quality, then click OK. Alright, let's proceed with the second example. So again, the software automatically scans for the image and then applies the standard retouching preset. This is the original image and this is the standard preset. If we go here to the preset tab, it will show all the available editing presets that you can choose from. For now, let's just reset it to default. There's a lot of presets to choose from and all of them have a different effect on the image. Personally, I wouldn't use these presets and just edit the image as I see fit. So let's go back to the controls tab and edit this image manually. First things first, let's remove some of the skin defects by using the spot removal tool above. Then we just simply click on the spot that we want to remove. Before, after. Let's now go here to the skin smoothing section. Then let's move the master fade slider all the way to 100 and see the effect. Obviously, this is way too much, so let's decrease it to a point where it looks more natural. Alright, this looks good. 
if we click this view edit skin mask button right here we can fine tune the skin selection by brushing on the skin but for this example the ai did an amazing job selecting the skin so i don't need to make any changes all right now let's go to the face sculpt section then remove the master face slider all the way to the right and see what happens uh oh it totally warped the model's face, and it's not looking good. So let's make very subtle adjustments moving forward. Okay, that's better. Now let's go to the skin lighting and coloring section. And if you move the master slider all the way to the right, this is how it looks like, which is a disaster. So again, just make very minor adjustments. Alright, that should do it. Let's go to the makeup section and slide the master fade slider all the way to 100. Again, this is not recommended. We totally changed the makeup on the model's face. Let's decrease it down to about 10. Okay, perfect. Let's move on to the eye section. And just for fun, let's move it all the way to 100. Okay, this looks hideous. So let's bring it down to about right here. Hmm, let's increase it some more. Okay, that's looking good. Let's also whiten the eyes some more. Okay, this is too much, so let's dial it down. Alright, that should do it. Let's go to the mouth and nose section. Then move the master fade slider. This is too much for me, so let's decrease the effect. Let's skip the hair section because there's really not much to change here. Then we go to the picture section and move the master face slider until we get the desired effect. Again, subtle changes can make a big difference. The layer section allows us to manipulate or change the background. I'm not a fan of this, so let's just skip it. And down here to the tools section, we can make other adjustments such as cropping, remove noise, lighting brush, clone tool, and replace sky. Let's just skip this section as well. And that's it! We've edited this image fairly quickly just by moving a bunch of sliders. This is the before, and this is after. Let's zoom in, before, after, and here is a side-by-side -side look. So now what do you think about Portrait Pro 21? Will this replace your current portrait editing software? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. Moving on to our next example, note that it is best practice to make sure that the face detection is accurate. Always adjust and move the points to make it more precise, so that when you make necessary changes, it doesn't warp or distort the face. Alright, let's revert the image to original. Then go back to the controls tab, switch to view after only, and then we use the spot removal tool to remove some blemishes. And as you can see, there are some limitations to the spot removal tool. It is not able to remove all types of skin defects, especially large ones, so you have to take note of that. Let's go to the skin smoothing section and move the master face slider to 100. And again, this is too much, so let's dial it down. Okay, this looks good. Then we go to the face sculpt section and move the master fade slider just a bit. And we do the same to the skin lighting and coloring section. Let's skip the makeup section and go over the eyes. Again, we move the master fade slider to our liking. Then we whiten and clean the eyes a bit more just to make it stand out. Okay, this is perfect. 
Then let's go to the mouth and nose section and adjust the slider as well. Okay, this is good enough for me. Let's take a look at what we've done so far. Before. After. Let's zoom in. Before. After. Not bad at all. And let's see it side by side. Let's now go down here to the tools section and use the clone tool to see if we can remove these larger skin imperfections. Let's zoom into this spot right here and then brush over it. Then we select an area to clone the spot that we want to remove, like so. We can also adjust the parameters right here to make it more seamless. Okay, this looks good. Let's go down and remove the other spot. So we brush on it, select an area to clone, and adjust the parameters. And that's it! We've removed those dark spots perfectly. Um, I'm still seeing a small dark spot right here, so let's remove that as well. Once we're satisfied, we click OK down here to exit the clone tool. OK, now I'm happy with this, so let's save it. And for our last example, let's use this image right here. Let me adjust the selection here real quick. Ok, that should do it. Now let's go to the presets tab and revert the image to original. As you can see here, there are other groups of presets that you can choose from, depending on which area of the face you want to adjust. Let's have a look at all the skin smoothing presets. There's general skin smoothing, smooth eyes, smooth and texture, Minimal Skin Smoothing and Intense Skin Smoothing. Let's go with the Smooth and Texture preset. Then we go here to the Skin Lighting and Coloring presets. This is Standard Lighting. This is Modeling Lighting. This is the Tan preset. And this is Increased Tan preset. I kinda like this preset, so let's use this one. Let's switch to a view after only. This is the original image. And this is our edit. Let's zoom in. Before. After. And let's save it. And here is a before and after of all the images that we've edited. So this is Portrait Pro 21. Literally, you can edit portraits to your heart's content. All you have to do is move a few sliders until you get the desired effect that you want. And yes, photo editing is highly subjective, but just make sure not to overdo it. Now there are some minor improvements from version 19, and there are newly added functions such as lighting brush, sky replacement, clone tool, hair lights, remove noise, and color styles. If you have the budget to upgrade to the latest version, I highly recommend it. And if you don't, Portrait Pro 19 will suit you just fine. And if you'd like to try Portrait Pro 21, I'll post a link down in the video description for a free trial. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe for more photo editing videos like this, and click on the bell icon to turn on notifications. Thank you for watching.